in favour of the reopening roadmap. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg joins us now from Canberra. Josh, good morning to you. Are we heading uh, into morning, a recession Carl, or you. not? Well, the June quarter numbers are out on Wednesday. The median market expectation is for a slight increase in economic growth, but it will be line ball. But it doesn't change the fact, Carl, that our economy faces some very uh, challenging days ahead. Uh, the lockdowns in our two biggest states are not only costing jobs, seeing businesses close, they're increasing our debt burden as well and having a real toll on people's mental health. So it's important that the country, and that means all the states and all the territories, uh, recommit uh, and follow through on the national plan that they agreed to at National Cabinet. You're in a bit of battle, obviously, uh, with Mark McGowan over this. Dan Andrews wants COVID numbers back to zero. Anastasia wants to take you to court so she can keep her borders closed. Are you living in some kind of alternate universe, Josh, that Australia is going to open up? Well, my job is to ensure that our economy stays strong, that more jobs are created and that we rebound as an economy out of this crisis. And the states and the territories are often ringing up asking for federal government economic support. And we've been forthcoming. We're providing already now more than a billion dollars a week uh, into the states and the territories uh, that are in lockdown, but also business support packages across all the other states and the territories. Um, I can see uh, that the economy will continue to suffer if we do not open up in accordance with that plan. And then you could have that ridiculous situation, Carl, yeah. where somebody in New South Wales could travel to, to uh, Canada before they could go to Cairns, or someone in Victoria could go to Singapore or Bali before they could go to Perth. That is ridiculous, and we need to ensure we open up as one country. You can bang on as much as you want, but they're not going to budge. Well, uh, that's why it's so important that the public and that is why it's so important that the business community keep making the case. I mean, it's not just the economic case that is important because businesses need that certainty to know that they can reopen uh, once uh, restrictions are eased. But it's also the shadow pandemic that Patrick McGorry, former Australian of the Year, has talked about. Uh, we're seeing a record number of teenagers turn up at hospital uh, with mental health issues as a result of the anxiety, the depression and indeed the suicidal uh, tendencies and thoughts that are occurring as a result of these lockdowns. But jo jo uh, in Josh, Victoria, it's Josh, more than I get 340 all, I get, teenagers I get all of that. I get yeah. all of that. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. You can say all that and you can, you can use as many reasons as possible in order to encourage them to open up. I can. But they're just not going to do it. They've drawn a line in the sand and they've said, we're not going to do it no matter what you say. Well, again, um, you've got pretty influential people in Western Australia, like Kerry Stokes, uh, like Rob Scott, uh, who have made the case, the economic case for their state opening up. And as vaccination rates increase, we know that we can open up in a COVID safe way. The plan that was agreed, Carl, by National Cabinet was based on the best medical advice in the world through the Doherty Institute. And it has shown that once you get to those 70 to 80 per cent vaccination rates, the transmissibility of the virus reduces, the number of people who get seriously sick reduces. So there's a real there's a real imperative here. And I do think the more you talk about it, the more I talk about it, the more business leaders talk about it, the more that reality will sink in that Australians, whether they're in Brisbane or Perth or Melbourne or Sydney or Adelaide um, or, or Launceston and Hobart, mm. it doesn't matter. Wherever you are in Australia, you have to learn to live with why COVID. Don't, why don't you, why, instead of threatening, why don't you just pull the plug on, on some funding? You know, why don't you just go straight to it instead of faffing about? Because right now we don't have the 70 and 80 per cent vaccination targets okay. that were set out by uh, National Cabinet. What we do have in New South Wales is a record uh, number of people uh, rolling up their sleeves and getting the jab. You've got 66 per cent first dose in New South Wales. Mm. Now in Victoria it's around 55 per cent. Uh, in Queensland and, and Western Australia it's just under. 50%. So there's a real need for those states uh, to put a greater focus on getting more people vaccinated every single day so we can reach that target earlier and, then, and, then uh, and that it. we can see our kids go back to school and we can see businesses reopen. Okay, I can see what you're planning on the horizon. Uh, um, just quickly, uh, $13 billion in JobKeeper payments to companies that, that didn't need it. 
Um, mm -hmm. Labor's calling it the biggest uh, budget waste in Australia's history. Um, job keeper, company bonuses and dividends. Um, I mean, what's wrong with a public register of companies who receive job keeper so we can keep tabs on it? I mean, it's not it's going to rile a lot of people that people got paid bonuses as a result of job keeper. Well, I'm really glad you asked me that question because JobKeeper has helped save the economy and helped save the nation. According to the Reserve Bank, it saved more than 700,000 jobs. According to the Governor of the Reserve Bank, it was a remarkable program. And we do know that it helped see the very strong economic rebound, where our unemployment rate today is at 4.6 per cent. Now, if you're a public company, you need to disclose the amount of money that you got for JobKeeper. But if you're a private company, your tax uh, information is actually that. It's private. And what the Labor Party is seeking to do is to expose every small business across the country uh, with their private tax details. And you've heard from the Tax Commissioner that that would be a very, very bad mm. development and it would be a very, very bad precedent. With respect to businesses that didn't have a turnover, of, uh, that was down by more than 30 per cent. Treasury have done their own assessment and found that, that, um, that the program was very targeted, that it did focus on companies that had a large reduction in turnover. And I put it to you, Carl, if you're running a business and you had a 28 or 29 per cent or 25 yeah. per cent reduction in turnover, you'd be cutting your staff. Mm. And they didn't because of JobKeeper. So this is the Labor Party playing very dangerous politics with a very successful program. Yep. And all those people watching your show today know how successful JobKeeper was in helping them stay in a job. I had no problem with JobKeeper. Treasurer, good to talk to you. Thank you. Straight ahead.